Hello everyone and welcome to the extensive lecture series organized by Center for Computational Technologies CCTEC Pune. This particular lecture is dedicated for multi-block hexahedral mesh creation in ANSYS ICM CFD. Now before we begin this particular session, we will first clear an extremely important concept called blocking. This is the sole concept on which hexahedral mesh generation is dependent. We need to understand this thoroughly. This will also give you a feel of how hexahedral mesh is created. Blocking is an approach in ICM CFD by which we can generate hexahedral cells in a domain. Kindly note, by this we can create only hexahedral mesh. To create a tetrahedral mesh, there are different approaches in ICM CFD. We can say that block is an intelligent flexible box which can take the shape of desired geometry. For example, if we need to mesh a cylinder, we can take a block and put it around the cylinder. Next we divide the block into let's say n number of small boxes by putting n number of nodes on edges of that block. Now we deform block in such a way that it takes the shape of cylinder. The deformation implies projection of vertices, edges and faces of block on respective entities of cylinder. This is called association. The resultant block is cylinder itself with n number of small boxes which are hexahedrals. Thus this is how the entire hexahedral mesh generation is done in ICM CFD. Now we will move ahead to look into this in detail. This is a simple example which will give us the flavor of blocking approach as discussed in earlier slide. First step, we get the geometry. Then we create a box which will be called as the blocking box. Then we divide this box into smaller boxes for meshing purpose. Next is we put the box on geometry. Then we deform the box while making the box similar to the shape of the geometry that we need to mesh. Then the box finally takes the size and shape of the geometry that we need to mesh. Let us have a gist of terminologies used in this approach. The most important term is block. As of now, we have understood block is nothing but intelligent and flexible box which can be deformed in any way to take shape of geometry. If we use only one block to capture geometrical shape, then this is termed as monoblock structured meshing approach. If we use more than one block to capture geometrical shape, then it is termed as multi-block structured meshing approach. Further dividing block into n number of small blocks is termed as node assignment on block edges. Finally, deforming box to take desired shape is termed as association and vertex movement and the arrangement of blocks is known as block topology. Finally, deforming box to take desired shape is termed as association and vertex movement and the arrangement of blocks is known as block topology. From whatever we have covered so far, there may be many questions that come to our mind such as, how do I create a block topology? How do I change it if I require to change it? How do I associate it with a particular geometry? Which block is appropriate for a particular geometry? There are few things that need to be taken care of before we start blocking. The foremost question should arise once we see geometry is that what kind of block topology we will be using to capture geometrical shape including important features of geometry. How should we start making block topology that is either we opt bottom to top approach or top to bottom approach. We will be discussing these approaches in detail in further slides. Then next thought should be how do we deform this block to get desired shape. Which block entities that is vertex, edge, faces should we move or which block need to be aligned or deleted to get desired shape. Capturing flow physics is also extremely important. All these aspects will be covered as we move ahead. A hexagonal mesh is created by first making a blocking. A blocking breaks down a geometry into large brick shapes and structures. Each block is easily meshed with a pure Cartesian mesh. The block entities such as vertex, edge and face are projected onto different geometries. This blocking is saved to an independent file named .blk and can be loaded onto a different geometry at any point of time. A typical process in ICM CFD for creating a hex mesh is shown in figure. First is geometry, then blocking, then mesh without projection and then mesh with projection. Now let us look at top down approach. Please make it clear that block creation is independent of geometry creation. Once final geometry is obtained, we can start blocking of same. In top to bottom approach, we have to break single block which encloses whole geometry. 
this single block is split in n number of blocks. Then we may need to delete some unwanted blocks to achieve block topology. This is known as top down approach. In brief, a single block is split to get resultant shape of the geometry as shown clearly in the figure. The figure depicts how a single block is converted in U-shaped topology which is desired one. In other way, it is same as creating a sculpture from a big stone. In bottom to top approach, which is also known as bottom up approach, desired blocking topology is created as if putting layers of blocks in one over other. Generally, in this approach, we have to select proper location in geometry from which we can start layering of blocks in such a way that finally we have achieved blocking topology. In this approach, we can extrude faces of created block or copy blocks. This is the gist of this approach as shown in the animated figure. We can say it is same as creating building by layer bricks. We can use combination of top down and bottom up methods as and when we require. Now let us understand some simple but confusing terms. We know that any geometry consists of points, curves, surfaces and volume which is nothing but material point. Similarly, we have same entities named as vertices, edges, faces for blocks. Vertices are point entities, edges are curve entities and faces are surface entities for a block. Block occupies space of material point. During association, these entities of block are assigned to respective entities of geometry. The terminologies like vertices, edges and faces are generally associated with mesh entities in this case blocks while point, curve and surfaces are usually associated with geometries. So in short what we should remember is point, curve, surfaces and volumes are nothing but geometrical entities whereas vertex, edges, faces and block are nothing but blocking or mesh entities. Now let us get an overview of steps involved in blocking process. In general it follows below steps. First, we initialize the block. Then we decide the approach of blocking that is either top down or bottom up. Once blocking topology is ready, we associate vertices and edges to points and curves. Then we decide node distribution on edges of blocks that is define the mesh size. Next is we preview mesh, check quality of mesh and if needed improve mesh. Once appropriate quality is achieved, we write out the output file which will be the input file for solver. This is the overall process and we should be familiar with it whenever we start any project or any meshing assignment in ICM CFT. Typical blocking procedure starts with creating blocks which is termed as initializing block. When we click blocking tab it expands to different operations available for blocking in ICM CFD. As shown we can create 3D blocks or 2D blocks. We need to decide in early which approach we would prefer that is either top down or bottom up approach. The split option is highlighted in blocking tab which has different splitting operations which we will be using. We will be discussing this option in detail in future slides. Once blocking topology is finalized, next task is to project block onto geometry to get desired shape. This is what we call association of vertices and edges onto points and curves. The association option is highlighted in figure shown. To verify projection of associated entities, right click on edges in model tree and enable show association. It will result in association arrow as seen in figure. The arrow indicates that curve is going to be projected on respective geometrical entity. We will discuss this option in detail in future slides. Next, we move position of vertices either to improve quality of mesh or for capturing geometrical shape in a better way. All vertices can be projected to geometry at once or by using snap vertices option in association operation. Vertices can be moved individually along the geometry entity. We can either move single vertex or multiple vertices at desired location in space. Various vertex movement operation will be discussed in detail in coming slides. There is some color code assigned to entities of blocking to check whether it is associated or not. We will notice that they appear in either of four colors that is red, green, white which is actually black on light background and blue. Red color indicates that vertex is constrained to point and can't be displaced unless association is changed or removed. Green color indicates that vertex is constrained to a curve and that vertex can slide along that particular curve. 
white which is black on a light background color indicates that vertex is constrained to surface and that vertex can slide along any active surface which means any surface part which are turned on in model tree. If not on a surface it will jump to the nearest active surface when moved. Blue color indicates that vertex is free meaning that it can move anywhere in space. We have to select near vertex or edge to move along edge direction. Once association is done we have to preview the mesh. We can set hexa size on surface just to take a quick and crude preview of hexa mesh. For fine tuning of mesh we can set number of nodes to an individual edge. This is time consuming but results in good quality mesh which can accurately capture physics involved. We will be exploring this option in detail in future slides. Now let us see the pre mesh option. This option allows us to preview mesh at any location and at any stage. This mesh is always updated if any changes are made in blocking entities. This is just a preview not the final mesh. The pre mesh has different options available for visibility. We can preview mesh with different projections such as point projection, edge projection and face projection. If project vertices option is enabled then vertices on edges of blocks will be projected to curves or surfaces to which they are associated. If project edges is enabled nodes on edges of blocks will be projected to curves or surfaces to which they are associated. This option is generally used for 2D models. If project faces is enabled all face nodes and edge nodes will be projected to their associated curves and surfaces. This option is generally used for 3D models. Finally most important thing is checking quality of mesh generated. The term quality itself reveals its meaning. There are some benchmarks on which we decide whether generated mesh is sufficient to resolve physics accurately. There are some number of benchmarks available in ICM CFD such as determinants, angle, aspect ratio, warpage etc. We will explore these options in detail as we proceed. Now we are going to explore in detail various operations and options available in blocking. The following is a gist of operations in blocking functional tab as we proceed from left to right. Blocking model tree, create block, split block, merge vertices, associate, move vertices, transform blocks, premesh parameters, premesh quality checks, block check, delete block. Thank you for viewing this particular session in our lecture series. If you have any queries, please post them on our e learning portal.